Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Random. Egberto is your host. Thank you so kind for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Anyway, folks, welcome aboard. Paul Fleming from Powder Springs, at La- 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 Georgia. Good afternoon, May Wood from Long Beach, California. We also have in the house Eric Hayes from Kingwood, Atascacita. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. Bridge MCP from Binghamton, New York, upstate New York. We have Lee Grant from Montgomery County. We also have AVQ from the one and only Brooklyn, New York. Uh, let's see who else we have in the house. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? Where is our Yvette Avery Herod? I haven't seen her in a few days. Probably we need to check to see, make sure all's good. Make sure all's good. Maybe she's off on vacation having some fun. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But we just want her to know. Hey, we're thinking about you, Yvette. Anyway, folks, uh, well, a good thing happened today. The, the interest rate's been cut by, by 0.5%. Now, uh, that's good. You know, it uh, t- takes off some of the burden from Americans from having to pay for the mistakes of the, uh, for the mistakes and the greed of the corporate sector. Here is a deal. I, I, I want to, I, I, this is not the subject of the show today, but I, I just want to, point out a few things because it drives me crazy the inflation that we had first of all the conditions to create the inflation was created under it started pretty much with donald trump mismanaging the crisis the pandemic in other words the world pretty much shut down because we didn't hold the pandemic by the horns to take care of it, to prevent it from spreading. Then we got all the non-scientific nonsense that allowed it to spread even further. We had countries like Australia, New Zealand that did the right thing. They're, 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 they did allow all this conspiracy, crazy theories to hold. And they were able to contain the virus. It shows that it can be done. They were able to, they had strict rules of how people came into the country and what they had to go through. Strict rules. And that prevented, in their case, their economic shutdown. So while we were locked up at home, while we were around the place being very careful, super careful, Folks in Australia, folks in in New Zealand, they were wearing their masks, but their supermarkets were open, their schools were open. Whenever they found an area that had a breakout because something got in, they completely shut that area down. They, They quarantined it, knocked it out, and life went on. That's how an intelligent people an economy that listens to smart people, that listens to science. That's how it works. And it's, it's good to say that uh, uh, one of these economies were controlled by a woman. They did the right thing. So all these issues, Australia is not a small island. Australia is a continent, a country continent. No, thank you. You're wrong. And not only that, uh, that doesn't have anything to do with it anymore. So, it turns out uh, that after Trump, with his stupidity, got Americans, hundreds of thousands of Americans to die, after he caused the explosion of the virus in America and throughout the world, because America as a leader uh, let's. I want to say something. America is an island as well, okay? I mean, America is an island. If you take America, Central America, and South America, it's also an island. It's surrounded by water. Again, use your brain, folks. Uh, it's a, Just like Australia is a continent, not an island continent, but a continent, a big continent, so is the Americas. Because we call it North America, South America, and Central America, we don't see it as an island. But America itself, if you want to be technical about it, 
is an island. Eurasia is an island. They're all surrounded by water. Now, if you want to talk about size, now you have Jamaica that is a real small island that is surrounded by water. But my God, folks, my God, folks, get, we got to get, we have to get smart. So Donald Trump created the world problem that created the supply chain problem that created the, I mean, all these issues, technically speaking, he created. So now, because we got a supply chain problem, because we got, uh, then they wanted to blame, let's say, a little war in, in, uh, in Russia. It gave the corporate sector the excuse to zoom their prices up. As these prices went up, uh, it, that's what's called inflation. When we look at, uh, we, we had Katie Porter, a congresswoman, trying to figure out what are all the reasons why our, our prices went, we got an inflation rate of 9%. After doing the research and calculating the increase in profits, etc., she made it clear from the economists that looked at the problem, she made it clear that half of that 9% inflation was corporate greed. And the other half was supply chain issues and certain spot shortages in certain areas. And that legitimately, when there's a supply and demand issue there, you get a higher inflation. But what I want to tell all those who are listening to me right now, is I am not going to give the corporate sector a break as even Katie Porter did. The corporate sector, along with Donald Trump, bears 100% responsibility for, for, the, uh, for the inflation. And let me explain. When you had a supply chain problem, you had a supply chain problem because the corporations that don't have much upstairs, they created a problem by offshoring and in the process of offshoring, not maintaining a sufficient inventory onshore to ensure that if there are hurricanes, ships that have sunk, a, a pandemics to ensure that if you have these disruptions in your supply, you have a back in store to ensure that you can continue your production and serving your country. In other words, offshoring and just in time inventory mean using the inventory as soon as you get it is a recipe for disaster. And that's what corporations did to America. They created a recipe for disaster by offshoring just-in-time inventory, supporting a buffoon for president who also created policies, didn't solve the, 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 the uh, pandemic problem. So therefore, 100% of all of that inflation should be gone to the corporate sector. But and Donald Trump. But let's back up a bit further. Now, in order to kill inflation, in order to kill inflation, what is the standard modus operandi that economy that our our country uses? They raise the interest rates, and they raise the interest rates so that it becomes more difficult. For the average American citizen, the average citizen, to borrow money to buy things. For the small businesses to borrow money to create things. So what happens then is they create a false, uh, what's the word that I want to say, a false loss of demand. Because if you are paying more for credit, if you are paying more for these other things, you have less money because the government is taking your money or rather, the high interest rates, right? 
are taking your money. They are charging the banks a higher rate for interest. The banks charging you a higher rate for interest. And that's the way they slow down the economy. They make you, the American citizen, pay the price for the private sector, the corporations ripping you off. So as you buy less from the corporations, that gives them an incentive to lower their prices or to stop raising their prices. In other words, you pay when the prices are high and you pay to bring to ask those those parasites not to raise the rates anymore. That's what interest rates do. So ultimately, uh, inflation is the corporate sector ripping the money away from you and the high interest rates is the government saying, all right, I'm going to take your money so that you don't buy a lot from those guys. And those guys are then forced to stop raising their prices. But ultimately, it's always the middle class and the poor who pays. That has to stop. That has to stop. Remember what I've said continuously. An economic system is man-made. We design the system that way. We design the system where we say we think about business first, corporations first. And whatever is necessary to ensure that their owners, their, the, the business owners and all these guys do well. To hell with the regular person. That's the economic system, capitalism. We created that. We have the choice to alter the system so that we, the people, are not responsible day in and day out to bear the cost of the inflation created by the ineptitude of the corporate sector, by the inflation created because of the ineptitude of a former president, by the inflation created by the unintellectual service of those who we leave in charge of this economy. So while it is great that we lost, we, we lowered the price of our, uh, our, the interest rates by a half point, which is going to save a lot of us money, right? Because yeah, our, the mortgage rates and all of that are going to go down for those people who have mortgage rates that are tied to the uh, discount rate. It's going to fall. In order to survive, I had to do one of those at one point. So it'll help me out as well with this drop in, um, in, in that interest. But I want to tell you that they always ask us to pay. And we have a lot of sycophants out there that continue, continue to put their faith in these leaders who continuously screw them continuously screw them and they try to defend folks like uh, some folks in our chat right now continue to support the the pilfer by those private by those corporations that continue to simply take advantage like parasites of all of us so what, uh, so what I want to tell you is the following, folks. As Kamala Harris wins, which she will be winning in November, not in short measure, but in a landslide, it is incumbent on us progressives because why she's going to win in a landslide is the coalition that's being put together. And this coalition is going to look a lot different than the Obama coalition, which was progressive heavy with ancillaries on the side. This coalition is going to be a humongous coalition of women, Republicans, Democrats, and everybody. And everybody, as soon as she is elected, going to use her as the standard bearer of whatever it is that they stood for. They know they can't have Donald Trump because he's a, he's a 
incestuous creep. He's a dummy. They know that. But what they're going to try to do is position Kamala Harris as she wins to support their policies. And that is what we have to guard against. Those of us that know progressive values are the things that we need to move our economy forward. We cannot rest. We have got to get on board immediately after she wins. I'm not talking about in January. I'm talking about she's going to win big on November 5th. Progressives need to be out there on November 6th making their demands. Because this humongous coalition that's being formed, everybody's going to want a piece of her. And we are going to have to remind her that the values Americans are asking for are, in fact, progressive values. All right. With that, let's go ahead and get the show started. The show today is titled, and uh, I, I, I couldn't get all the, vid- the, the, the uh, graphics ready for it today because I was way, 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 way behind on the scale. But the title of the show today is The Haitian Cat Eaten Lie Called Out. They knew. Whoop. Misspelling. They knew. Wall Street and economists want Kamala Harris. All right, and we're going to start with a video, and then I'll go clean that up. And the first part I'm going to start with is the video talking about J.D. Vance, Trump, and all of those being called out. I'm going to talk about the cat story first. So let's go ahead and let let me see which one is this one that I want to get started first. Bear with me, guys. I'm a little bit, you know, I am I'm, I I I get very very taken with so many gullible with some of us being so gullible, you know, this morning on the morning show, I had to handle some of that as well. But anyhow, um, but before I go to that, let me read some of what you have to say before I go. So let's do that. Let's do that. Eric, I'm not going to read your nonsense because a lot of it is right wing nonsense and I won't pollute the the, the space with that. Uh, So I'm just letting you know that you're kind of wasting your time. Uh, Michael Radnan says, AP, Hezbollah hit by a wave of exploding pagers and blames Israel. At least nine dead. That was yesterday. Fourteen so far are dead today from not just pagers, but from walkie talkies. It's a it's in my opinion, it is criminal. In my, uh, let me tell you how. Well, let me finish reading this stuff. Uh, Hezbollah exploded near simultaneously in Lebanon and Syria on Tuesday, killing at least nine people, including an eight-year-old girl, and wounding several thousand. Hezbollah and the Lebanese government blamed Israel for what appeared to be a sophisticated remote attack. Among those wounded was Iran's ambassador to Lebanon. I'm still feeling shocked by this. Two thoughts. One worse than the other. Pagers are usually carried on the belt, on the pants. You know what else uh, is at that height. Yes, I know. A child's head, whoever uh, thought such a strategy uh, was a good idea, I bet it won't be long until Israel claims Iran's ambassador to uh, to Lebanon was a member of Hezbollah and follow up. Let me tell you, it's worse than that, um, brother, brother Radnin. Uh, it's criminal because, yes, you said what's at that height. Yeah, not only a man's private parts, but also his daughter or son that he's taken somewhere. The worst part about this is they go ahead and they put these things in pagers and walkie-talkies without knowing who owns the pager or walkie-talkie. This is such a criminal act. It's a ter- it's an act of terrorism. What the Mossad did, and that's who did it, and 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 uh, America has already just about confirmed that it's Israel, and if it's Israel, that would be the, the purview of the Mossad. That is such an evil, evil, evil thing to do. It's not enough that they wiped out Gaza and that under that rubble of miles and miles of rubble lay many dead women, children, and innocent people. Murdered over 40-something thousand. It's not enough. Now you go into uh, Lebanon and Syria and you murder people that have these things. I mean, if if this isn't 
if this doesn't show the disregard these people have for humanity, I don't know what does. And th- the thing about it is a lot of people are saying, what is Kamala going to do about it and all this stuff? Let me tell you, she can't do a damn thing about it right now. And for my progressive brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you this. If you really want to change, we can't really stop Israel from doing what they're doing right now. Hang back. Let's make sure that we get an intelligent person in the White House. And then, like I said, on, on November 6th, we start making our demands. And I don't talk about making our dis- demands without push. I'm talking we need to build the phrase up for those demands. But that is criminal, what, uh, what Israel has done. You know how many kids wear the beepers and probably are wearing those beepers? It is sad. And anybody who doesn't see that, sat on them as well. Paul Fleming says, in theory, if the Democrats take the House and Senate, they could prevent Trump from taking off office by declaring him an insurrectionist with Biden's approval. Yep. And then they can't go after Biden because he has immunity. Good point. I wouldn't do that. Okay. If Trump was to win, if Trump won the popular vote, I want him to serve. I mean, I'll probably move to Panama, but, um, uh, I would probably move. I I would probably honestly move to Panama if Trump were to win in a in, in a popular vote. I mean, if he wins in a in the electoral college, I would I would have to sit down and consider. But if he win in the popular vote, it tells me that the country has completely degenerated, and it's not a place for me. And I would you know and I would get my my daughter ha- or should already have easy citizenship in Panama. But I'll, I'll go ahead and get my wife's citizenship in Panama as well. I couldn't stay in the country at that point because it would have told me that we've evolved. It would have told me that the degeneracy of the country is complete. All right. Paul Fleming says, Fed's lower interest rates by half a point. Huge cut. It means the economy is recovering and we have avoided a recession. Yeah. First time we've ever had a, such a soft landing ever. Uh, let's see what else we got. Well, at least Kamala hasn't doesn't confuse Af- Alaska with Afghanistan. I mean, the guy is, is not only dumb, but he's lost it. All right, let's see what else we got. The cat issue continues to have legs. No, it doesn't have any legs. It's a lie. Uh, let's also continue. Uh, again, it, it tells you where you get your news from, and that's on you. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Paravet, paravet, paravet. Paul Fleming says, the Black Caucus Teamsters who endorse uh, MVP Harris early, it's unfortunate that the Teamsters writ have collective amnesia regarding which political party saved their pensions. It's really unfortunate. Well, that's what racism does to one. It, it, if you, it, it, it prevents you from thinking logically. That's why we have even some in this room that just can't see that electing a rapist electing somebody who would hold their daughter's crutches uh, that they feel safe to put that person in office. Anybody who feels safe electing Donald Trump for being a accused rapist and a convicted sexual abuser, ripping employees off, uh, stealing people's money with a false university, uh, going ahead and, uh, and, and raping women, assaulting women, uh, I mean, the order of mag- and and that person think they can look at their kid in the eye and say, I feel that this guy should lead my country, lead my world. That's not on those of us that are sensible. That's on those people who have to look their kids in their eye and say, daughter, if a guy grabs on your private part, ah, well, so be it. Son, go grab on women's parts because we really don't care. Yvette Avery Hera, thank you for being here. I was worried about you. I hadn't seen you in a couple of days. I had, thank you for letting me know that, sis. Uh, Yvette soon saying about Teamsters. Okay, Yvette. Uh, Yvette, 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 call us and tell us about this Teamster thing. Please, please. I want to hear it from your voice, from your, I want to hear what you have to tell us about what the Teamsters are doing. Please give, give the show a call. Because your voice is important as one who represents the Teamsters. Um, okay, let's continue. Let's let let let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Um. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what else I've got here. Uh, para ver, para ver. Yeah. So, but, but I'm going to see if Yvette's going to call, and I hope she does. But here's the thing: if she can, 
she may not be at a place where she can, but if she can, it would be great. Um, here's the deal, folks. You have to realize it talks more about that person who's going to have to tell their daughter or their son that they are electing a convicted, a convicted fraudster, that they're at somebody who grabs on women's private parts, somebody who has a disdain that they have for women. It's on them. But that's something that they're teaching their kid. Yvette, Yvette Avery Herod, welcome to Politics Done Right. I'd, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing okay. A little tired. <laughs> but other than that, I'm doing all right. Well, let me, let me tell you why I'm asking you to call, Yvette. I was very disappointed that the Teamsters decided to just sit it out. Why don't you tell us what's really happening? Because you know what's more than any one of us or any than the news could actually tell us. Um, yeah, because actually I was just trying to put in the notes that I'm in D.C. I just finished up a, a political conference. So I was at Congress today, actually. So I caught the news just a few minutes ago because we've been so busy that they decided not to endorse. And they did release the the numbers from the polls. My concern and a lot of our other concerns are a lot of teams just didn't even get a chance to participate in the polls. So really, what are those numbers? Those numbers don't really mean much to most of us because we realize we are not Trump supporters. Now, we know we have some, but majority are not. And so we went through all this in my eyes for what. So I'm glad some of these teams are locals. And, of course, the TNBC, which I'm a member of, did go ahead and endorse. And locals across the country are endorsing the harris Walls campaign because we know who actually has fought for labor, uh, who saved our pensions and that type of thing. So I'm not sure what his whole goal was, uh, our international president, for doing all this extra and then come out not at all endorsing anyone, but that's what he said. But that's not all of us, to be clear. Now, well, let, let, let me see if I understand this right. Because one of the concerns that I had is he, your, your leader also went to the Republican convention to speak. And I think because he did that, the Democratic convention didn't give him the floor. What was that all about? Right. So he mentioned this week when I was up here that he reached out to both uh, the RNC, DNC to speak at both of them at the same time. Well, once you show up at the RNC, at the DNC, I wouldn't invite you either. Like, why, right. why would I invite you after you spoke over there? So I see their viewpoint. There's no way I would have invited him myself uh, if I was at the DNC because of that. But I'm thankful that they did bring on some of, of our retirees. One of my good friends was actually on stage uh, at the DNC. So I, I'm very thankful that we still got representation uh, at the DNC, despite, you know, what the president decided to do and go to the RNC. So let me ask you this, Yvette. So even though the national Teamsters did not endorse anybody because they, they knew where their, their, but their bread is buttered because notice they didn't endorse the Republicans either. either. But you're telling me that the individual, uh, what do you call them? Individual divisions or whatever you call locals. them. Locals. Yeah, so we have local locals. unions all over the uh -huh. country. Yeah. Right. And the so there's over 325. Uh huh. Teams to locals across the country. So they have the right to endorse who they want to. Uh, so they have been coming out and doing stuff. OK, so have any of uh, you're saying several of them have already endorsed the uh, uh, Harris Waltz ticket, correct? That's correct. Uh, has any of them endorsed the Trump ticket? No. OK, so great. I, I, I am glad to hear that because, again, it is important. It's amazing that the pension and all this stuff that got done for the Teamsters was not done by Donald Trump. In fact, he screwed them. And it was the, the uh, Democratic organization that did it, Democratic administration that did it for them. So, look, I appreciate you um, calling in uh, uh, to the show, Yvette, because, again, I, I only get my Teamsters information from one person. And that's the person who knows <laughs> Yvette Avery Herod. And congratulations on that award. I watched, I, I watched your speech that you gave. That was great. Well, it was actually a Women's Day program. So thank you. But it, it wasn't an award. We were doing a Women's Day program recognizing uh, Clara Day, who's a, a historic figure in the Teamsters uh, world. So, but I appreciate you. But yeah, it was a yeah, program. It, it was good. I, I was thought on. you got an award, though. I, I, thought, I thought it was one a thing that, that you actually... 
well, I thought it was an award. Okay, no problem. I thought, <laughs> believe it okay. or not, I really thought it was a, a named award or something like that. Well, hey, what can I say? But look, thank you so okay. kindly <laughs> for calling in, Yvette. Anytime, anytime. Bye-bye. Anyway, folks, that was Yvette avery Herod. She is one of our PDR Posse Union leaders. Keep us informed on what we need to be informed on, folks. Anyhow, anyhow, uh, let me tell you guys, um, I am glad, you know, I feel a lot better after speaking to her because if a union goes ahead and, and support Donald Trump, after Donald Trump goes on and speaks to, uh, Elon Musk and, 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 and congratulates Musk for not wanting a union. Congratulates Musk for saying, fire those people who attempt to do a union. And if, if we have a Teamsters that goes ahead and supports that candidate, it shows you the power of sexism, racism, and misogyny because that is the only reason why somebody could lose their mind and support somebody who says we don't support unions i am with you elon musk throw them out like reagan did with patco thank you very much yvette for that okay i gotta get busy and start playing our videos here is the deal let's start playing the videos on cat people let's go ahead now if you want to understand the evil within the Trump campaign, the evil within J.D. Vance himself, understand this. These people knew the story they were putting out was a lie. They knew that the woman, one of the people who started the memes, etc., the woman uh, pretty much recanted, apologized to her Haitian neighbors, went ahead and said, oh, she actually found her cat, you know. Uh, it, it, it's just amazing that in as much as they know all of this, they know that there isn't really that problem in uh, Springfield, Ohio. They continue to push that story because they're able to otherize the, uh, the Haitians, otherize others of a certain pigment to create a stress that they can then project throughout the United States and try to tell others, be concerned about immigration because you can become this city where people eat your cats and your pets and your geese and it 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 it, it is a entrenched evil that tries to keep people apart. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. New evidence the Trump campaign knew that rumors about Haitian immigrants eating pets in Springfield, Ohio, were lies almost from the start, but persisted in spreading them anyway. According to The Wall Street Journal, they knew because they were told nine days ago. Springfield City Mayor Brian Heck says that is when one of J.D. Vance's staffers called him, quote, he asked point blank, are the rumors true of pets being taken and eaten, recalled Heck. I told him no, there was no verifiable evidence or reports to show this was true. But Vance tweeted it that day. And a woman who actually did report her cat missing, not eaten, but missing, found the cat hiding in her basement days later and then actually apologized to her Haitian neighbors for suggesting they were to blame. But both Vance and Trump kept pushing the lies anyway, and they haven't stopped. This was last night. You say that you have a responsibility to share what your constituents tell you, but don't you also have a responsibility to fact check them first? Well, I think the media has a responsibility to fact check the residents of Springfield, not lie about them. Multiple people, by the way, multiple, multiple people have come to my office, have said on video, they talk about the pet store. And that's all the American media wants to talk about. And of course, the American media goes into Springfield, dives in, harasses everybody who dares to complain about the condition of the town. That is not journalism, and that's not seeking the truth. That is bullying on an industrial scale. And I think the media ought to be ashamed of itself. But again, the city manager... I think I might have said mayor, but the city manager told a member of J.D. Vance's staff it wasn't true. 
In any case, the result is that a city is gripped by chaos, where state troopers are patrolling elementary schools for a second straight day, and a local college has suspended athletic events in response to dozens of bomb threats. Ohio's Republican governor didn't blame Trump directly for those threats, but he has made it clear He's not helping the situation. If these comments that are baseless, that are being made by former President Trump and Senator Vance, if they were not being made, would those threats stop? Well, I don't know. I can't predict what would happen, but the the statements are wrong. I've said they were wrong. The mayor has said they were wrong. And frankly, they need to stop. So, yeah, this story is deeper than just the joke of cats being eaten or or something like that. It is a serious story because the intent of the the Trump J.D. Vance campaign is to go ahead and try to create an image of a city, a town overrun in Ohio by immigrants and create a false narrative even though they know it's not true and then have that projected on city after city after city after town after town in America with the expectation that they can make this immigration fallacy and a real issue as opposed to something to make life better to make it an issue. The evil within is astounding and it is something we better mitigate. This guy belongs nowhere close to to any elected office yet again. He needs to be kept so far away from the presidency because that is evil incarnate. The Daily Dispatch national correspondent Kevin Williamson wrote a great article. I think the article was titled, uh, let me find the title of that article. It was it was titled The Exotic Cat Eaters of Springfield, where he categorically destroyed J.D. Vance for knowingly lying about what's going on in Springfield, Ohio, about the cat eating, etc. And he came out with a conclusion that I think folks ought to hear because it's real. It's a demonization of people to make those who are otherwise not at their full potential many times by choice. What's that choice? Having followed Donald Trump is one one way of stagnating. But anyway, there are there are folks that they're feeling their own shortcomings. I want you to listen to uh, Kevin and then we'll take it on the other side. Kevin, uh, your, your new piece is incredible. You wrote that you were surprised that a guy that is basically this smart, that has the education that he has, yeah. would, would resort to these lies when he knows better. And that's what every time I look at members of my former party that went to, you know, Yale and Harvard and Stanford, and all these, so I'm like, wait, they, they could be doing so much as a conservative. They could be helping this country so much as a conservative. And instead, they follow Donald Trump around and spread his lies. Yeah, you know, Donald Trump being a serial liar is not exactly new, so I don't think we have to probably dwell on that too much. J.D. Vance being a serial liar is a relatively new development, so maybe we should talk about that some. What's really interesting to me about this is that, you know, J.D. Vance wrote this very famous book called Hillbilly Elegy, and the hillbillies who moved to Ohio to work in the factories were actually a lot like these Haitians. They came from one of the poorest places in the Western Hemisphere. The locals complained that they didn't understand the local culture, they didn't speak the language, uh, they didn't fit in very well, even down to the urban legend about, you know, the hillbillies living off a diet of possums and uh, roadkill and things like that and squirrels. So J.D., of all people, is uh, someone who's well-placed to understand the way in which these legends can really slander and libel and, and hurt a community. And the people on whose behalf he he purports to speak right now have their schools closed down. They have their college closed down. They've mm-hmm. had to cancel public events, a big annual cultural festival they have. It's going to cost their economy a lot. And as I note in the story, this is all about something that actually isn't happening. No one in Springfield seems to think it's happening. I didn't talk to one person uh, who believed any of these stories. And what's even worse about this is that there are real issues related to immigration in Springfield. You've got a town of 50 to 60,000 people that's had 12 to 15,000 immigrants from a desperately poor country that is very culturally different from the United States move there. Of 
course, there are going to be issues associated with that. But rather than talking about the things that are actually going on in Springfield and the things that can be done to help to uh, improve the situation for everybody, we're having this crazy conversation about you know dogs and cats. And these guys have the temerity to complain about people calling them weird when just they're obsessed with this weird cat eating story. And I have to imagine that someone who's not a political obsessive watching the debate and then just Trump out of nowhere starts shouting about they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. That had to be a really weird moment for normal people. Yeah. Yeah, so Kevin, uh, in your new piece and entitled uh, The Exotic Cat Eaters of Springfield, Ohio, a pretty long story about a thing that didn't happen. You write in part this. Springfield, like many similar cities, had been suffering from a declining population and economic stagnation when it joined a number of other Rust Belt cities in an effort to actively recruit immigrants to settle there. The town fathers may not have had 12,000 Haitians in mind, but that is what they got. And the results were pretty good. Contrary to the rhetoric you hear from Van said all, unemployment went up, not down, and wages employment. went up. Employment went up. Employment went up, and uh, wages went up too. The case against the Haitians isn't that they are welfare malingas or cat eaters, or even that they are illegal immigrants who came here thanks to Joe Biden's lax border enforcement, which most of them aren't. The real issue is that by working overtime and investing in the community, they have made life more challenging for a reliable Trump voting constituency, marginally employed white people on the dole. Yeah. He nails it. But you know, folks, if people would stop trying to project themselves onto those they don't like or those they despise and instead try to better themselves, instead try to look at the reality of things. I mean, uh, for all of those who have this thing against immigrants and then would try to despise them in whatever manner they can, they should remember the distinct differences with the immigrants of today and the settlers of yester centuries. Because the immigrants of today are needed and magnanimous. And while there are issues based on politics that have prevent the, the appropriate or the, a more, a better assimilation as we, we bring folks in, the reality is that those who came way before, they didn't come with this level of benevolence. The, the, the reason you see the people like Trump try to project criminality onto these immigrants. One wonders if they are trying to put onto the new immigrants what the centuries of immigration, meaning the settlers that came here to America in the first place, their behavior. The current immigrants' behavior is much, much different than the settlers who formed or that were the genesis of this country. Let's be real, folks. Let's stop projecting. Let's be the good people that most of us are. And I must elaborate from what Bridge has been stating several times in the chat. Thank you for highlighting that for me, um, El Señor uh, El Señor Michael Rudnin. These Haitians are legal residents. They are legal residents. They are not. They are not doing anything wrong. They are legal residents. Don't forget that. Let's go to the next video. I just had to break in to say that we got to finish up these videos, though. Let's go ahead and get that done now. Jason Furman, former White House Council of Economic Advisors, went ahead and did a comparison of Donald Trump's economic plan and, of course, uh, Kamala Harris's uh, economic plan. And what he came out to say is is pretty much what everybody who has any knowledge of economy economics would say. And that is uh, his plan is risky. His plan will definitely be inflationary and his plan would also blow up the debt. In other words, the deficit would grow humongously under him. I want you to listen to Furman and then we'll take it on the other side. All the economic polling indicates that people trust Donald Trump in in the political polling on the economy by wide margins. What does Kamala Harris have to do, if she can, to gain the confidence of the American people and of Wall Street? 
that she can handle the economy. Right. I mean, political advice to her, I don't know, but she has an overwhelmingly strong case. Donald Trump is pushing tariffs that are just insane. 20 percent on every country in the world on our allies, on things that we don't even make here in the United States for no particular reason. He is threatening the Fed, which, by the way, is now potentially going to be among the most successful um, it's ever been in bringing inflation down and doing it painlessly. Um, with the deficit, um, Donald Trump is talking about much, much larger increases to the deficit than anything um, she's talking about. So I don't know exactly what she needs to do message-wise, but she does have the facts on her side. He is much riskier for the economy than she is. It just seems that Wall Street and big business want their tax cuts no matter what. And we'll ignore a lot of other data. You know, that's that's a factor. I think that's part of it. Um, and, you know, I'd like to see taxes go up. I don't think we can afford to keep them where they are now. There's some that have been really polarizing, like a tax on unrealized capital gains. I think there's a number of arguments for that. The truth is they're not going to actually pass it um, in Congress. I wish they, you know, some days I wish they would, um, but they're not going to. So, you know, the idea that she's a socialist because she wants a capital gains rate around where it was under Ronald Reagan um, is just I think, the wrong way to think about her policy. The question is, why many Americans uh, still have more faith in Trump in the, for the economy than Harris? The reality is uh, there's a whole lot of sexism in there. There's a whole lot of uh, implied patriarchy in there that somehow people think, oh, the man's going to do a good job, etc. He's the one in charge of the economy. And also there's a false belief that uh, many by many that the economy uh, that Republicans know about economy. All those statements are false. First of all, the economy has always done better under democratic presidencies. And that is simply because of policy and the way the, they write their policies. Secondly, uh, the, the, the false thing that women cannot take good care of an economy or that women are not good with the purse strings has always been, uh, has always been false. Let me tell you, some of our best governments around the world, and I'm talking Western governments around the world, were run by whom? Women. Even, uh, even conservative women. Thatcher, uh, we, we take a look at uh, uh, in, in I think it's Australia, in New Zealand. Look, let's be clear here, folks. Um, Kamala has a whole lot that she has to overcome that has nothing to do with her intellect. That somebody so intellectually deficient as Donald Trump could become president and a woman that is otherwise uh, very much intellectually his superior uh, has a hard time for people to recognize that reality, both her on the economy and otherwise speak for the, the speaks millions of how far we still have to go to bring real equity to make sure that we don't have a society brainwashed into believing who are the ones that actually create, who are the ones that actually know what they're doing, who are the ones that actually have the intellect to serve. We're getting there. The polls are telling me we're getting better. Well, Trump is not going to like this one. Uh, he, you know, he thinks he's a capitalist that everybody loves and that really knows everything. Of course, we know he's a loser who has always just bankrupted companies and he has a new company, uh, the Truth Central or Truth Social, that's about to go belly up as soon as, uh, <laughs> as soon as folks realize he's no longer viable for the presidency. Anyhow, Mark Lazary, Avenue Capital Chairman, came out and he pointed out he's a big, he'll be a big supporter of, uh, Kamala Harris, and more important, he is actually stating as a fact that her economic plan is much better than Donald Trump's, and Donald Trump plan is going to just uh, not only economic plan, but Donald Trump himself would destabilize the entire world. But you know, that being said, let's listen to what he has to say, and then we'll take it on the other side. 
Voters are deciding which candidate will be best for America's economy. Now, Republicans, they want you to think that Vice President Harris, she's anti-markets. She's a Marxist and she is bad for business. But our next guest does not think so. And he is putting his money where his mouth is. He's one of the biggest names on Wall Street. Earlier tonight, I spoke with him, Mark Lazary, chairman and CEO of Avenue Capital, about his support for Harris, the economy in the 2024 race. 80 CEOs have come out in support of Kamala Harris. You speak to many. Those who aren't, is it that they're just looking to make sure there's deregulation and they want the tax cut? Or is there a genuine lane of people who say, I don't know enough about her. I don't know what she stands for. I don't know what she's going to put forward. I think I think part of it is CEOs always look at it and say, if you're a Republican, it's better for me. But why do they think that? Because that's how it's always been. Or the idea has the always idea. been. The data that's doesn't correct. support that. I agree with you. But that's it's the idea that's been it's the same thing that like Republicans are better on defense. Republicans are better on foreign policy. And when you look at what's happened, that isn't the case. All right. But that's how it used to be. So I think if you're a CEO, you're trying to figure things out. Um, but ultimately, what you really want is just a good economy. And that's what you've had for the last four years. So why don't you look at the data? The data is simple. You've had a positive economic growth. Everything's been good. The U.S. economy has grown at 2 to 3%. So do you want more of that or do you want change? What do you think a Trump economy will look like? I think you're going to have issues. And the reason you're going to have issues is you'll end up having higher tariffs. You're going to have more instability in the world. You're not going to have stability. What markets care about is stability. The more instability, what's happening in Russia, what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening around the world. And the fact that if you look at what happened before under Donald Trump, in my opinion, I think you had more instability. You've had very much for the markets a lot of stability, and that's been positive. If she wins and Donald Trump does not accept the election results, what kind of instability do you predict? What could happen in the markets if we're in that period of, of what could be chaos? I don't know if you have chaos. I think at the end of the day, whether he accepts it or not, doesn't really make a difference. It's over. You had an election. He will have lost. Period. So, But you think, period, you think it'll be over and done with? No, I think he'll complain about it. I think people, I think you'll have Republicans complain about it because now you live in a world where if you don't win, it's not because you lost, it's because something was rigged. Like, that's just not reality. And ultimately, people deal with reality. Will there be issues? Sure. But I don't think you're going to have a lot of issues. We've got 50 days to go. Between now and Election Day, what does Kamala Harris need to do? I think she just has to give her message. She's got to show that she's for the future, that really she's here to help. Like ultimately what an election's about is who do you believe in? Who do you want to lead you for the next four years? I think her job over the next, over the next 50, 60 days is to talk about that, that how she can help a normal American, just somebody who is just working day in, day out. Is she better than Donald Trump? I think at the end of the day, the answer to that will be a resounding yes. Now, let's be clear. I am not like supremely happy that, oh, she is be is she got the support of a Wall Street mogul. I am not like super happy about that. But you know what? I rather uh, have a support than not have a support because at least we know what Kamala Harris's values are. We know what her ethics are. And it is a middle class ethic. It is a poor people's ethic. It is an ethic of fairness, no matter what you think uh, about her otherwise, as opposed to Donald Trump, who has no ethics whatsoever, who is, uh, I mean, we, we, by, by definition, the instantiation of evil. So therefore, by, therefore, in as much uh, progressive just have to be pragmatic in accepting the support from everywhere. After all, we've accepted the support from Liz Cheney. We accepted the support from many Republicans who we don't share any ideological uh, similarities with at all. But knowing that what's important is the country, yes, we take and accept that. It is now incumbent on progressives going forward as we move forward, as Kamala Harris becomes the president to not uh, Obama rise. Her, in other words, not leave her alone 
after she becomes president, but apply and keep the pressure on her to ensure that the progressive values that will uplift the middle class and the poor are instantiated. In other words, we are going to first do the first part of the job, get her elected. The second part of the job, as we all know we must do, is out there, go out there and work the people, educate the people, enlighten the people so that they will put the pressure on all our politicians to get the progressive values that we've all worked for, that we've all earned, and ensure that we no longer transfer our wealth to the parasites on the top. Absolutely, Breach. I am ready to serve a woman. I am. I was ready to serve Hillary Clinton. I thought she was the most qualified then, even though I was a Bernie supporter. Uh, I was ready to, we have to make that transition. The good thing about it is the time is now and it's going to happen now, but we have to be prepared to make sure to do it all right. So folks, positive affirmations. We, <clears throat> this landslide is not going to happen on its own. It's going to happen by us ignoring folks like, let's say, Brother Eric and, and CSAC and, and, and uh, others who are still living in the troglodyte, troglodyte era, right? And what we have to do is just go out there and educate people, enlighten people, give people positive information, and let them understand that the change is coming, the change is here to stay. Don't worry about it. It, uh, Eric and Brother CSAC and Brother uh, uh, um, uh, Lee Grant, all of them will be along because the good thing about the policies we support includes them. Their policies don't include us, but our policies include them. We are the inclusive ones. We are the ones who are striving for a better humanity. We are the ones, don't forget it, we are the ones that make a better economy. So, Bridge, you're right. I can't wait to serve a woman. I can't wait. Uh, Paul Fleming says, CNN airs a montage doing exactly what Vance told them not to do. Uh, uh, the Daily Beast, Donald Trump. Oh, I, I got to look at that, guys. I got to look at that. But anyway, we are at 4 o'clock and time to go. But before we go, I want to ask all of you to support the program. And how can you support the program? Today, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to just ask you to do one thing. Please consider going to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter, and become a paid subscriber. It's like giving me a cup of coffee. Not me, Politics and Right. Uh, a cup of coffee. Please go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter and consider becoming a paid subscriber. And we, we need to get up to a few thousand. We're just in the hundreds. Well, actually, a hundred and change. A uh, couple, we're, 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 I think we're like 30 away or 20, I think we're 24 away from a couple hundred. But we need a lot more um, subscribers to our paid subscription. So please, we, and you know what's so funny? We have over 15,000 subscribers, but only about less than 1% of those are, is it less than 1% or 1%? But what we need, we'd like to, uh, the idea is we'd like to get up to over about 10%, over 10% that subscribe to the program, I mean, to the newsletter. So please go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter, and consider becoming a paid subscriber. I got to get out of here. My name is, uh, first of all, love you all. And I mean that from the depths of my heart. And I mean everybody, whether you left, right, otherwise, whether you get on my nerves or not. Because what I'm not going to ever do is allow the corporatocracy and the indoctrination they have affected on many of you to work on me. If I hate you as much as you hate our message, if I don't, if I, if I partake with that, they've won. Because in as much as they have messed up your mind, if I hate you for having a messed up mind that they did, I've allowed them to win. It is my job, it is my calling to make a better place. And that place includes you, all of you, absolutely all. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. 
And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.